Thanks. Now, the British Board of Film Classification, which gives films in the UK age ratings, is tightening its rules on violence, sex and bad language in response to its latest audience research. Yeah, the changes only affect future releases. But as Charlie Rose reports, some popular films would have faced stricter ratings if they were released today in cinemas. Released in 1964, Goldfinger is one of the classic Bond movies, but some of the content hasn't stood the test of time. Now let's both play. The British Board of Film Classification, or BBFC, says people who took part in its research feel this scene actually portrays sexual assault. And these drama and media students in Bury and Greater Manchester agree that the film's current classification of PG for parental guidance is too low. It's not appropriate for younger viewers, for the younger audience. I don't think it's suitable. I think it should be at least a 12 a minimum. I tend to ignore the kind of not as appropriate side of it because that's more how I was brought up, to just see the better things of it. The BBFC says its guidelines are updated every few years to ensure standards reflect the expectations and values of audiences. The message of the In its film. new survey, the organisation spoke to more people than ever before. 12,000 people there or thereabouts responded to your latest survey. Tell me what they told you. This time they've told us that they're slightly more concerned about violence and sexual um, activity. Uh, there's a degree of tightening up on language, particularly at the lower levels, but there's a bit more relaxation when it comes to cannabis use. Don't worry about that. And that's why the new film about Bob Marley has been classified as suitable for children over 12. Gonna be all right. You like that one? Yeah. Our research had come out already, so it enabled us to apply the new research to the film. Um, the film was now given a 12A. If we had received that film six months ago, it would have been given a 15. And older films put forward for re-release must also be tested against current attitudes. Last month, the original Mary Poppins from the 1960s was reclassified from a U, which stands for universal, to a PG because of concerns about discriminatory language. Bumblebee from 2018 was among the more recent films shown to focus groups as part of the BBFC's latest research. And at school, the children had their own firm views. So do you think the PG rating is right? Yeah, because there are like toys that children play with and I think um, that if kids can play with those toys and they can at least see the movie. I think the violence should at least be toned down a little. Because like the younger audiences, they see stuff, they want to copy it. It's like they might think it's right. And 2021's Mitchells vs. the Machines, sold as a family comedy and classified as universal. Yes, it does show violence, and although it is um, humans against machines, there's still the threat of humans doing that to other humans. Having it as a PG, the parents can talk to the child about it. It's not that violent, but it's a little bit violent. Do you think the rating is, is, is fair at the moment? Um, uh, yes, I do, because it's just a cartoon, actually. But the British Board of Film Classification says following audience feedback, it now adopts a stricter position on the classification of violence. So these films would be labelled differently if they were released today. Charlie Rose, BBC News. We are joined now by Dalia Youssef and Lewis Powell, who are both members of the British Board of Film Classifications Youth Panel, and the organisation's president, Natasha Kaplinsky, joins us from the London Picture House. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for talking to us today. Um, Natasha, if I could come to you first of all, why is it so important now for the system to be updated? Why have things changed so much? Well, as we just heard in the report there, we do update our classifications every four or five years just to ensure that we are in step with public opinion. This time, as you've reported already, there's no massive kind of seismic shift, but we're just charting. It's a barometer, really, of public opinion to see how attitudes are changing. And every four or five years, that is reflected in new classification guidelines.
Um, and Lewis, do you think it's fair to say that maybe our opinions have, ch have hardened on some things and softened on others? It's not a universal change. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're such a modern generation, we're so different. So we have different perspectives on different things than we did before. But some things have gotten more intense, so we view maybe violence in a different way than we did before. But maybe we're more relaxed on things with kind of modern perspectives, like drug misuse or something. And Dahlia, do you think young people pay less attention now to that little number at the top mm. of the screen? Does it, does it matter? Yeah, I think they really do matter. Because, like, as you, as you said earlier, with um, streaming platforms, you don't usually see it as you do in the cinemas, but they are really important issues that you do need to take a, pay attention to. And um, when you're on streaming platforms, anyone of any age can basically go on them when it could be really harmful to them. So it really is really important. How do we protect young people from things that they maybe are too young to see? see I think we do have to get this parental guidance and p parents and children themselves have to be aware of these issues and the certain new findings that we're seeing now of what's really important for our society. And, Natasha, it's interesting, isn't it, the way that we consume movies has changed so much. And, and I wonder, therefore, about the relevance of these ratings. Do we notice when you turn on a streaming platform, whether it's got the little logo in the corner, whether it's got an age rating, how important are they in this day and age? Well, that's a brilliant question, and actually there's a lovely answer to that, which is we're working with over 30 streaming services, and we want to work with many more. Um, our research tells us that our classifications are trusted by the nation. Uh, Netflix, for example, were an early adopter, as were Amazon Prime. There are a couple of outliers that we're still trying to uh, mm -hmm. work with in a constructive way, but it's really important that parents, those caregivers, people who are choosing films to watch for, maybe younger members of their family or people in their care are given the same age ratings and so um, those streaming services are working very constructively with us we are trusted by the nation uh, that's what the research has told us and um, we're very excited to continue that process but it is hard certainly as a mother I find it very difficult keeping track of what my children watch and so it's it's a constant battle isn't it but people do trust the age ratings and that's what's important and Natasha I don't know if you've seen it but the start of the package that we just ran had a little clip of an old James Bond film right at the very start and that's probably a film that's been on on Christmas Day and people have watched for generations and years and years and years. And actually, when you see it now, you think, I am really not sure that is appropriate. I'm not sure that's the sort of thing I would want young kids to watch. It's interesting, isn't it, how what is appropriate changes. Absolutely. Attitudes have changed. I mean, we're an organisation that's over 100 years old. If you look at how classification has changed every four years, there's just tiny little adjustments. But actually, if you reflect back over history, attitudes have changed substantially. So any film that comes into the BBFC is judged against current guidelines. We saw that with Mary Poppins recently. And um, in relation to some um, extra research that we've done on discrimination, there was some language in that that would have caused huge offence. And so Mary Mary Poppins was given a slight adjustment. It still means that everyone can enjoy the film, but just as a bit more warning for those that are making those decisions. Films like Goldfinger, other James Bond films, any other film that will come back into the BBFC for classification ahead of a relaunch, for example, will be set against the current guidelines, which will enable us to allow viewers to make those decisions so that they aren't shocked or offended by what they might see. Um, and, Lewis, how does it work? How does this new classification do the research? How are you involved in this? I think that's so important. We're kind of... We're young people. I think it's very important that young people's voices are heard. Yeah. So the BBFC very kind of actively engage with young people. They've gone to schools. They've done youth groups. They've done different research online from a variety of ages. So this is not just, like, five people sat in a room going, this is what we've decided and we're doing it for everyone. This is research where thousands of people across the UK have given their opinions. So it's the UK's opinion on different films. Are you ever surprised by what that opinion is? I suppose you kind of are. I mean, you have your own perspective and you know what your friends and family think, but when you go to kind of the wider sphere of the UK, you're like, wow, everybody agrees on this or they disagree on this. And I think it's very important that there's... There's nuance in this conversation and there's different opinions. And Dahlia, how empowering is it to be able to make a difference? Oh, definitely. It is it's so empowering. I, 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 we both mm. love films. And I think when we just talk about films with our friends, we can't make any real difference. But being in the youth panel, being with the BBFC, we can have the sort of say in society and what our opinion it makes a difference to it. Um, Natasha, you said you're very involved with, with the studios and the streaming companies. Do you, 
what do they make of this new classification? Because will it change how they make content, how they make films, according to the classification? We work with uh, distributors, you know, as they are producing their films, providing a service to guide them if they've got a script, for example, they'd like us to look at. But, I mean, just reflecting what uh, Dahlia and Lewis have said in the studio, this is shaped by you. I mean, you know, we, we, we spoke to over 12,000 people, and so hopefully the distributors understand what viewers want to see. This is a, a huge sample size. It makes us feel that our findings are very robust, and so hopefully the studios will listen listen to, to what the viewers want to, as much as we do. Do you see a change coming, Natasha? Society is changing by degrees. I mean, you know, you, you very um, uh, accurately reported what we found in that great big sample set of 12,000 people. I mean, if you think, for example, an opinion poll uh, that you'll be reporting on the news, I heard it in just a, a report before this one, uh, 1,500 people are generally consulted. This is eight times the size. So this is a fair reflection of, of what's happening in society. So society is changing in small degrees and it's important that we reflect that um, in films as well. And, and Dali, we've talked a little bit about, you know, our modern day view back at, at old movies. Yeah. Should they just be left in the past? No, I definitely think that we should help hold today's standards to those films. Okay. Because there are people, young people now, they can be impressionable to films. They can pick up things and ideals that we don't want in society. We don't want to be reflected in society that could be harmful. So it is important that we keep those films to today's standards. And so this is about updating the classification as opposed to editing the old film? Yeah, so sh we should update it and make adjustments to it as um, necessary. Lewis? Yeah, I mean, new audiences are discovering these films every day. They're old but new, new audiences, younger people are watching them, particularly these classics. Yeah. I think it's very important that we kind of reserve the history of it and we update it. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. And Natasha, can I just say a very special thank you to you for getting up so early <laughs> and for joining us once more on BBC Breakfast <laughs> after nice all this time. I'm wondering oh, if you missed word. the early start. I'm... I miss you all so much, honestly. <laughs> that was the best job I ever had, BBC uh, Breakfast. I really mean it. Aside from the 3.20 alarm call, yes. you are very lucky to be sitting on that sofa and I we send know. you all my love. Thank you very much. Oh, no, thanks, Natasha. We nice know how lucky you. we are. It's lovely to see you. Thank you. So you've got a red sofa of sorts. Yes! A burgundy cinema chair. We like. <laughs> Hers Thanks is posher Natasha. than ours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's showbiz. <laughs> uh, thank you to you two uh, as well. Uh,